Demographers project that the world's population will grow to a number between 10 and 12 billion by the end of the century. That number makes the challenge of building a sustainable future a daunting task. But important research suggests that upward spiraling projections miss one crucial variable, increasing levels of education. A groundbreaking inquiry of more than 500 experts has been summarized in a new book, World Population and Human Capital in the 21st Century. Its findings provide the focus for this edition of Rewind. At the Wilson Center, we believe that demographic trends in reproductive health, including fertility, youthful age structures, migration and urbanization, all play an underappreciated role in global dynamics. We hope to increase understanding of those trends for policies and programs. Education is a very important source of observable population heterogeneity. Almost universally, uh, more educated women have fewer children and lower child mortality and more educated men and women uh, live longer. So there's this very strong differentiation by level of education. So you see, particularly in the East Asian cultural context, highly educated women have few children. That's why the age pyramid doesn't look like a pyramid anymore. And one of the key questions that we face in many European countries as well is whether the higher education of the young ones can compensate for their smaller numbers in terms of economic growth. And this focus on universal primary and secondary education and basic health, these are the dimensions there. And they would be valid for all countries in the world, not just developing countries, but for shrinking, aging, uh, rich countries as well. It would be fully consistent with human rights. There would be no uh, clash of interests there. And as I said before, it is at the very heart of the MDGs and the likely SDGs. It is certainly true that the that the measure of education that we use in this book is a, I don't even want to call it a proxy, it's, it's what it is. Uh, the quality of education is not in there at all. That varies enormously between urban and rural countries, uh, urban and rural parts of the same country, across country, and over time. However, what I want to emphasize is just putting these data together was an enormous task of great difficulty. But assuming that it's a non-rich, non-oil rich country, that countries that have four children or more on average struggle to develop. They have problems developing and part of this is tied to the educational system not being able to catch up. But what are your thoughts on that statement? Would you agree with that and how does that fit in? Well, the relationship between general socioeconomic development and income growth uh, and education and fertility is, of course, a very complex one. They influence each other. And uh, there is, of course, this notion of the demographic dividend that says, essentially, so if there is an externally triggered fertility decline that opens a window of opportunity uh, where uh, societies then can invest and need to utilize this window to invest in education and other facilitating factors to increase uh, productivity and economic growth. We all often think of the demographic dividend as a monolithic um, change, but in fact, I think it's experienced by different segments of the population at different points in time. So the, uh, there are portions of the populations that are already ex experiencing that dividend. For more information, visit wilsoncenter.org. Click the Programs tab to find additional resources from the Wilson Center's Environmental Change and Security Program.